Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. One of the biggest, most overwhelming themes from the January 6th committee's first two public hearings is that everyone knew the election was not rigged. All of the people around Donald Trump, other than a select tiny little batch of a few, they all knew there was no big lie or that the big lie was a big lie, that there was no fraud. They talked about it amongst themselves. Some of them even said it directly to Trump. But the other big theme is that nobody really did anything about it. None of them stood up and spoke the truth publicly. They all, in their own quiet way, went along with his lie. And in that way, they are all essentially his accomplices. They knew what was happening was wrong. That is very clear. But they played along, even if they resisted internally, even if they didn't want to get their hands dirty. They helped to perpetuate Trump's plan to overturn the election, which depended on convincing his supporters the election was fraudulent. They did nothing to prick that bubble in public. Committee member Congressman Zoe Lofgren, who will join us shortly, explained this at yesterday's hearing. Former President Trump's plan to overturn the election relied on a sustained effort to deceive millions of Americans with knowingly false claims of election fraud. All elements of the plot relied on convincing his supporters about these false claims. Mr. Trump's claims of election fraud were false, that he and his closest advisors knew those claims were false, but they continued to peddle them anyway. Among those closest advisors, of course, Attorney General Bill Barr. He used his very powerful platform to push claims of election fraud beginning even before the 2020 election. But elections that have been held with mail have found substantial fraud and coercion. For example, we indicted someone in Texas, 1,700 ballots collected he made, from people who ha could vote. He made them out and voted for the person he wanted to. Now, just to be clear, that claim that there's more fraud, which is what he's implying in elections with mail-in ballots, is complete bunk. Nonsense. Not true. Barr, the top law enforcement official in the country, went on air and said that before the election, and he let Trump go on spreading the big lie for weeks after the election. And after Joe Biden was declared the winner. In fact, Barr waited until December to make any public comment rebuking Trump's claims of fraud. And when he did that, he did it in a little quiet voice. On December 1st, he finally told the AP, not on camera, not on Fox News, not straight looking into the television, to date, we have not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. Ha ha! What a profile in courage. Good work, Bill. A few weeks later, in his resignation letter, Barr had nothing but praise for Trump and the investigation to his allegations of fraud. Quote, I appreciate the opportunity to update you on the department's review of voter fraud allegations in the 2020 election and how these allegations will continue to be pursued. At a time when the country is so deeply divided, it is incumbent on all levels of government and all agencies acting within the purview to do all they can to assure the integrity of elections and promote public confidence in their outcome. He continued, I am greatly honored that you called on me to serve your administration. I am proud to have played a role in the many successes and unprecedented achievements you have delivered for the American people. Earlier this year, Barr, after all this, even said he would still vote for Trump if he's a nominee in 2024. But as we now seen over the course of two hearings under oath in testimony of the January 6th committee, Barr knew it was all a lie. I told him that the stuff that his people were shoveling out to the public were bull was bull****. I mean, that the claims of fraud were bull****. They'd wasted a whole month on these claims on the Dominion voting machines, and they were idiotic claims. I told them that it was that it was uh, crazy stuff, and they were wasting their time on it. I thought, boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has you know lost contact with uh, with uh, he, he's become detached from reality. My opinion then, and my opinion now, is that uh, the election was not stolen by fraud. You know, when I was growing up in New York City, there was a phrase we used called down the block tough. Down the block tough was like someone got in your face, you kind of like meekly sort of got away from them. And then when they were down the block, you're like, yeah, what? Bill Barr, down the block tough. Like, look at all the swagger in that room. Like, oh, this is nonsense, idiotic. Where was that in November, December, Bill? Could have given one interview saying all that. One interview. 
Barr was not alone. Members of Donald Trump's own family, his daughter, Ivanka, son-in-law, Jared Kushner, could have stood up and sounded the alarm, but they went along with the ex-president and his lies until the very end. As Maggie Haberman reports in the New York Times, Ivanka Trump's colleagues have recalled her being among those urging White House staff members on election night to fight, even as it became clear that her father would most likely lose. Her husband, Jared Kushner, who was also senior advisor in the White House, attended several meetings about post-election strategy with a range of political and West Wing advisors, as well as lawyers like Rudy Giuliani. But they both admitted to the committee, again, under oath, when forced to, in testimony we finally got to see over the past few days, they knew it was all nonsense. This is the president's daughter commenting on Bill Barr's statement that the department found no fraud sufficient to overturn the election. How did that affect your perspective about the election when Attorney General Barr made that statement? It affected my perspective. Um, I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. Did you ever share, Mr. Kushner, your view of Mr. Giuliani? Did you ever share your perspective about him with the president? Um, I, I guess uh, yes. Tell me what you said. Basically, not the approach I would take if I was you. Oh, you know, not the approach I take. You do you boss, father-in-law. Personally, I'm not into the hang Mike Pence situation, but you know, whatever you do. Chief of Staff Mark Meadows also stuck with Trump to the bitter end, as Susan Glasser puts it in The New Yorker, quote, without Mark Meadows, January 6th might never have happened. He served as the matador for the former president's election lies. And by again, by the end of December 2020, Meadows also, like the rest of them, because they have functioning brains, was clear-eyed about the truth, according to Trump campaign lawyer Alex Cannon. I remember a call with uh, Mr. Meadows, where Mr. Meadows was asking me what I was finding and if I was finding anything. And I remember sharing with him that we weren't finding anything that would be sufficient to um, change the results in any of the key states. When was that conversation? Probably in November, mid to late November. I think it was before my child was born. And what was Mr. Meadows' reaction to that information? I believe the words he used were, so there's no there there. There's no there there. In the final stretch before the election, this is back in, uh, I think around the summer, um, Donald Trump hired a new campaign manager, a guy named Bill Stepien. And he played a very active role in that short period of time. Tim Miller writes in the bulwark, quote, Stepien didn't just take some arm's length consultancy. He chose to sit in the big boy chair as the man child responsible for getting Trump four more years in power. In his testimony to the committee, Bill Stepien tried to distance himself from the crazier Trump advisors. And he said he believed Trump was not being honest after the election. There were two groups of them. We called them kind of my team and Rudy's team. I didn't mind being characterized as being part of Team Normal, as, as reporters, you know, kind of started to do around that point in time. I didn't think what was happening was necessarily honest or professional at that point in time. So yeah, that led to me stepping away. Again, could have blown the whistle, could have called up a reporter, could have given an interview, could have tweeted something. And he claims to have stepped away, but Stepien's still raking in a ton of cash from Trump for spreading his lies as the consultant for the Trump packing campaign. Where's that paycheck getting signed, Bill? He's also consulting for the woman Trump wants to replace January 6th committee vice chair, Liz Cheney, in Wyoming's sole congressional seat because Cheney would not go along with the lie. Now, to be clear, <laughs> lest I seem ungrateful, I am glad that most of the people around Donald Trump were on Team Normal, as Bill Stepien puts it. It's a good thing that most of the people in his inner orbit would not really put their shoulder to the wheel to destroy American democracy. So kudos, I guess. But all of them, Bill Barr, Ivanka, Jared, Mark Meadows, Bill Stepien, could have said something publicly at the time. On Monday, we heard from former Georgia U.S. Attorney B.J. Pock in the hearing. He resigned rather than go along with the big lie, which is admirable and noble. But again, he also could have said something. All of these people had a platform. They could have just spoken the simple truth publicly, not 
one of them did. Bill Barr kinda in a quote to an AP reporter. And so Trump supporters, well, they believe the Trump world was united behind the big lie. They believe what they were told to great consequence as Liz Cheney laid out in Monday's hearing. Hundreds of our countrymen have faced criminal charges. Many are serving criminal sentences because they believed what Donald Trump said about the election and they acted on it. They came to Washington, D.C. at his request. They marched on the Capitol at his request. And they repeated Donald Trump's lies practically word for word at the Capitol on January 6th. I know exactly what's going on right now. Fake election. They think they're going to shoot us out of our boat and put Congress Biden in office. It ain't happening today, buddy. You voted? Yes, sir. How'd it go? Voted early. It went well, except for uh, the... Can't, can't really trust the software. Dominion software all over. We voted, and right in the top right-hand corner of the Dominion voting machine that we used, there was a Wi-Fi symbol with five bars. So that most definitely connected to the internet, without a doubt. So they stole that from us twice. We're not doing it anymore. We're not taking it anymore. So we're standing up, we're here, and whatever happens, we're not laying down again. All of Donald Trump's accomplices hold some responsibility for what happened on January 6th. Imagine if they had come forward during his second impeachment trial. Even if they didn't have the guts or courage in the moment, the fortitude. There's a chance they could have done it a few weeks later. Could have affected the outcome. There's a chance that Donald Trump could have been convicted, I believe that, and barred from running for office again. If those people, again, did the minimum thing. They just told the truth out loud. Out loud it very well could have completely altered the trajectory of American politics.